Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest. Before we begin, I just want to say thank you to our sponsors. It's DMA Consultant. DMA Consultant is a great group. They help small business owners um, become big business owners. They help them with their marketing. They don't want you to get scammed by those those big marketing companies. They believe that you know um, that honesty is the best policy. So dmaworld.com uh, wants to help people who are in uh, in small businesses grow to become large businesses and not become scammed by those big companies that kind of take advantage sometimes of the little business owners. So today we have a very special guest, and this is Bill Scal Scalzetti, and he is a specialist when it comes to romance and dating, and he has a lot to tell us today. It's very exciting. I'm really excited to talk to him. He has a lot of knowledge in the field of romance and about men and women, and he has a lot to tell us, so I'm really excited. So Bill, can you tell us a little about yourself and what you do? Sure, Stacy. Thank you. Uh, well, I call what I do romance coaching, and I, that means I work with single people to help them find the love they have always desired. Mm -hmm. I help, help them go from heartache to happiness, and I do that with, through my audio book, Romance by Choice, which is a unique audio book because it also contains seven musical albums in order to create the emotional component that's so important for single people to understand. And I work with people from 26 to 70 plus years of age, whether they've never been married, divorced, widow or widower. And I did spend many, many years researching relationships after I had a failed marriage at a young age. And I just said, how does something that starts out so joyously crash and burn in a rubble of heartbreak and disaster? Right. And it really bothered me. And I wanted to find an answer. And after many years of talking with people, running groups in New York City and so on, I realized that mostly single people have no idea what a relationship is or how to have one because we were never taught anything about relationships. Right. So everything we know is stuff that's been put in our heads by our family, friends, relatives, television, the movies, you know, stuff we hear on the streets. And as we grow up, become teenagers and stuff, and we want to start dating, we're just doing all the things that we have been told we're supposed to do. Right. And we form opinions of the opposite sex based on all the stuff put in our heads. Mm -hmm. And then we just go out and start partying and doing these things. And then we meet someone, we go out on some dates, Things happen, we break up, go on to the next one. And it's just a cycle over and over and over again. And then sometimes we meet somebody that isn't as bad as everybody else. And then we marry that person. And statistically, one out of every two marriages fails. And the other part is of the 50% that don't fail, we don't have a statistic on how many of those marriages are just in name only. Right. So... Something needs to be done, and that's my mission in life, is to help educate as many single people to the belief that they have the choice in who they get into a relationship with. That's why the name is Romance by Choice, because most people just do romance by chance. Right. And it seems like a lot of times when, as time goes on, you know, people change also, and sometimes I, I see in in many cases, people, you know, they look back, well, when you were 20, 20 you, you were like this. And then they can't accept that the person has changed over time. So, you know, um, I think, I, you know, what would you say is some of the most important things that people really should understand in order to have a successful, you know, dating uh, experience or even a successful marriage? Well, I think the first thing that single people need to understand is they need to love and respect themselves. Too often I've counseled people who just don't have enough love or respect for themselves. They don't think they're worthy. They don't think they're good enough. And therefore they are willing to settle. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing people have to do. 
And then every relationship, there are, in my opinion, there are four pillars to a successful relationship. And that's truth. You have to be truthful with your partners. Don't lie. Don't cover up. Put it on the table. Right. Trust. You have to trust your partner. Communication. That's a biggie. Because most relationships are fail because we don't communicate. Even right. as life progresses, you can be married to someone. Five years, 10 years later, something may happen in their life. Well, that's, no, that's normal. That's life. But if you don't communicate, if you don't talk about it, if you don't understand what your partner's going through, yes, it's going to lead probably to a breakup. Right. And the last pillar is romance. We can be very romantic before we get into a marital relationship. And then seems once or even sometimes we just get into a good permanent relationship with someone. And all of a sudden we just stop. We don't take care of ourselves anymore. We don't do anything together. We don't look for romantic things. Romance just seems to disappear. Right. And then, you know, after a while, it becomes boring. Right. And again, relationships end. So, I mean, these are things that are important, but communication is so vital. Yes. Because, you know, we all know that as... The world goes on and day after day, things happen. Right. Sometimes you're in a very loving relationship. Everything is great. You have a child together. You're so happy with the child. Something happens to the child. And then the parents disintegrate. Mm -hmm. Or one of the parent, one of the people in the couple gets sick. Right. They maybe come down with cancer. Mm -hmm. So many times you hear if someone gets cancer and the partner leaves. Yes. You know, I mean, these are relationships that were not built on a solid foundation. Right. I mean, when you love someone, you're with them through thick and thin, no matter what happens. Right. You're there to support each other. But too often today, that doesn't happen. Very true. You see a lot of marriages end in earlier and earlier as time goes on. You see, you know, you used to see long-term marriages, even people were sticking it in, you know, they were trying to work things out and people, and yeah, I saw so many times growing up, I saw couples staying together and it didn't even look like they were happy couples, but they stood together again, probably because that's what they were taught the right thing to do is. And, you know, um, a lot of people are embarrassed to go for help, you know, and what do you say to those people who are embarrassed to go for help, but romance counseling can actually be a great benefit when you're actually able to have somebody there as a mediator and, and you could speak how you feel and the other person could speak how, how they feel and then come to some type of happy medium and maybe create some types of different solutions that could help improve the marriage. Yeah, if it's caught early enough, counseling can help. And that's why I say it's communication. It's right. all about talking about it. It's not hiding it. Right. But, you know, so many times, again, we just hide the things because, oh, I don't want to tell my husband. I don't want to tell my wife. I don't want to tell my partner. I don't, you know, and it just goes, we, we maybe tell all our friends, but we don't yeah. tell the person we're in a relationship with. Right. And then after a while, things just fester and they rot. Right. I think uh, sometimes people are afraid to tell the other person because they're afraid to hurt them. Or maybe they know how the person's going to react and the person might not take constructive criticism well. Like, what do you do in those situations? Well, again, see, if your relationship is built on solid communication, that's not as big an issue. Mm-hmm. Okay? And very often, sometimes it's more about how you tell your partner more than what you tell your partner. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, sometimes we just seem to have a, a habit of, you know, and this is part of the communication issues between men and women. You know, sometimes we try to be too direct or what we say comes out in a way of criticism or comes out not nice. 
Right. And instead of just, you know, but that, again, if your relationship has been built on good communication, it makes it much easier to say the bad stuff. Right. Very true. Now, you know, men and women are so different. They're two different species. They're, you know, and they think differently. They react differently. You know, are there some important factors that maybe men need to know about women and vice versa? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> look, it goes back to the caveman days. Men's jobs were to protect and provide. Mm -hmm. Women's jobs were everything else. The mm -hmm. women ran the cave house. They ran the cave family. They had the kids. They did everything. And of course, men would go out hunting. They mm -hmm. may be gone for days, but the women had each other. So they were a very strong community, which is, again, what you see in most women. Women make friends very, very easily. Right. Men do not. Mm -hmm. So we are more solid, solitary creatures. And as a result, you know, we don't do well when we're challenged. So over the years, and this is something I'm not, this is nothing new. I mean, women have evolved and have changed and have grown. Right. Tremendously. I mean, women now run corporations. They do all kinds of things. Men are still doing what they've always done. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like the man doesn't quite understand the woman because women keep changing. Men, right. we keep doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. So now when you have women who are more powerful, more stronger, they've grown, they're not just looking to be home raising children. Right. For a lot of men, that's difficult. And the woman does not know. She may even make more money than him. Right. And therefore, she doesn't know how to communicate with him because the one thing men need more than anything else is praise. Mm -hmm. We have a hero complex. Right. We want to be the hero. We want to solve our women's problems. Right. So how many times have you heard a friend say, I just came home and was telling my husband or my boyfriend about what happened at work. And we wound up in this horrible fight <laughs> because he tried to tell me what to do when I went to the office tomorrow morning. And mm -hmm. I didn't want that. I told him, I don't need your help. I just want to vent. But men right. don't understand that. Right. So, you know, when men become more enlightened, it's one of the things in my program. When I work with men, I have to enlighten them to mm -hmm. that. They have to understand that this is the way women are. Yeah. And women can use both sides of their brain at the same time. Men cannot. That's fact. So as a result, you know, men think linearly. When we talk, we talk about one thing. When we're done, we talk about the next thing. Mm -hmm. Women talk globally. So you could have four women at a table and you guys are talking about went out to buy a dress, somebody bought furniture, somebody went on vacation, and maybe because somebody said red, all of a sudden everybody's telling some story about red. And if a man's sitting there, his head's spinning around. <laughs> because and that's just the way it is. Yeah. So because we have different means of communication. So when women understand that a man is going to do this, she might say, honey, I just want to tell you what happened at work today. But, you know, you don't have to react to it. Just I just want to I just want to get it off my chest. Right. Okay, give him a warning so he knows. On the other hand, I tell men, when a woman comes in and she starts venting, keep your mouth shut. Right. Nod. Under, accept what she's saying. Right. When she's all done, then maybe she might ask you for help or not. Right. But understand, get what she's saying, where she's going with the conversation. Right. But we all are, all men are guilty of doing that. And, you know, that's because of this hero complex that we have. Yeah. 
You know, that I mean, it's, you know, if you, I, I always use the example of sitting on an airplane and some little old lady comes down the aisle and she asks some young man sitting there, could you put my suitcase in the top? Every single time he jumps out of the seat, picks up the suitcase, puts it up there, sits back down. She says, oh, thank you so much. You're so wonderful. Every man wants to hear that. Right. Praise your man. He'll do anything for you. <laughs> makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. You know, and it's funny, we were, we were talking very briefly before, but we were talking about how sometimes people, they have, a, they, they meet somebody and they have, there's a lot of qualities they like, but there are also qualities they want to change and they try to change the person, but, you know, they don't really have too much luck in that. And then frustration sets in. How do you feel about that? When people might meet someone, they might have a lot of, you know, compatibility, but then there are things about them and they're like, oh, you know what? I'll be able to change them and I'll be able to, you know, you mold them into the you know, perfect person that I want them to be. And it doesn't always turn out like that. That's exactly right. You see, part of successfully to find a successful relationship, you have to know what you will accept and will not accept in mm -hmm. a partner. And it's not just people sometimes say, I want somebody warm, nice and friendly. I say, if that's all you're looking for, get a dog. Because <laughs> nice and friendly. But if you want a true relationship, you have to know yourself. So when you know yourself, you know what's important to you, what's mm -hmm. not important to you, what you will accept and will not accept. What's that right. deal breaker? And I tell my clients, the minute that shows up, it's over. So you want to try to find those deal breakers as much as possible. Right. Up front, before you have invested a lot of time. Yeah. See, if sometimes if people think of a new relationship as an investment, that they're investing their time, time is money. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't take their money and put it in a bad investment. Right. But they take their time and put it into a bad relationship. Right. So... You need to know and when you hear those things. And I put my clients through a very long list of qualities, traits, personalities, habits, hobbies, interests, all types of things that you may not realize in the beginning. Right. Things you need to look for. I mean, you know, sometimes you could meet this great person and then the time comes to meet their family. And when you go there, they got some wacky family and you mm -hmm. might not be able to deal with it. Right. That's a problem because you're marrying not only the person, you're marrying the family. Very true. There are lots of different beliefs in this world. If you have someone who's on the opposite side of what you believe, you're going to maybe have a big problem. Right. So you need to know that. Religious differences sometimes can be a big issue. Right. You know, whether someone wants children or not. You know, one party may want one, the other person in the date may not want children. Right. Sometimes, you know, what's happening too in this world is that because, you know, people are marrying later in life. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you might be meeting someone who's already divorced and they may have children. Right. You may not want children or you may want children, but they don't want any more. Yeah. These are big issues. So this is why you have to know yourself. You know, if one person doesn't want children and the other does, I guess you're going to be fighting a lot. Right. You know, so, I mean, it's knowing yourself and knowing what you what's going to make you happy. Pets and animals. I mean, you know, sometimes people cannot take pets. Right. Other people love pets. Mm -hmm. And another thing that's very important, I always use the phrase to my clients, tell me what your lemons are. And they look at me, what do you mean my lemons? Mm -hmm. I said, tell me what's wrong with you. And they said, what do you mean? I said, look, if you have a health issue, if there's something that you're hiding, mm -hmm. bring it out now. 
Right. What are the things that have caused your previous relationships to go sideways? Right. You know, sometimes, you know, you might be a diabetic and you're afraid to tell anybody. Mm -hmm. But maybe the person that looking for you is also a diabetic. Right. Maybe that's a wonderful match because now you don't have to tease each other with sugars and everything. Right. Okay. Sometimes people have been a cancer survivor and they hide that. Mm -hmm. And then the relationship starts to get serious and all of a sudden that comes out. Right. The other person can't deal with it. Right. It's over. Mm -hmm. So you might as well put out everything up front. Some people say to me, why? That's crazy. I said, no, that's being honest. You right. are who you are. Yeah. So put it out there. If the person can't accept it, that wasn't the right person for you. Right. But imagine the person who says, I don't care. Mm -hmm. I love you just the way you are. We'll get through anything together. Right. So I, in my course that I have, I have these musical albums. I have two musical albums for a man to give a woman and mm -hmm. two musical albums for a woman to give a man. And by that, I mean the songs in the man to give a woman are all right. from a man's perspective, how he feels about the woman. Right. When you hear this music, unbelievable. It took me quite a long time to audit music, to find the songs that have the right meaning for a relationship. And the same with the ones from a woman to a man. Any man who hears this from a woman is gonna melt. <laughs> because they are just so powerful. They tell such a love story. Right. And if that's the way you truly feel about that partner, oh my God, you guys have a great relationship. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, and this can help build it. Right. You know, because again, it, it, it brings out emotion. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like um, sometimes that men, um, women look for more romance than men or vice versa? Or is it equal? Because sometimes like women tend to be more romantic, you know, or is it just the personality? It's really not one's not dominant more than the other. Well, you might be right in some respects that women tend to want more romance. But men, I think in a lot of ways are maybe embarrassed to really be romantic. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's romance is so important. And, you know, it's, it, it's the little things. It's like, you know, do you open the car door for the woman? Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, you know, when you go out to dinner, how do you handle yourself at dinner? Do you help her with the chair? Do you do the things? You know, do you ever bring flowers? Do you ever send a card? You know, little things like this, you know, go on nice romantic relationships, uh, trips and, and enjoy, you know, someone's company sitting there looking over the ocean or a ski resort or, you know, things that whatever is important to the two of you. Some people like cruises, right. some people don't, mm -hmm. you know, but if you, that's the whole idea. The more you get to know about the person, but romance is so important and romance doesn't have to cost a fortune. Right. When you can have a romantic dinner at home. Right. You know, somebody can cook a meal, bring a meal in, you can turn some beautiful music on, put some candles, you know, whatever, and, and, and enjoy each other's company. Right. Without telephones and all that other stuff that get in the way of our life. Sometimes we just yeah. can't turn off the outside world. Right. I feel like that's a big problem in our society that, you yes. know, cell phones and electronics have really taken over people's lives and they get so engulfed in it that, you know, sometimes they neglect people that are around them that want the attention, that need mm -hmm. their attention. And I, yeah. I hear that complain a lot. That's true. And that, you know, I mean, you, you go to a restaurant and you look around the restaurant. Everybody's on their phones. Nobody's talking to each other. Yeah. 
I don't know if they're using their phones to communicate with each other. I don't know, but you know, I mean, <laughs> it just looks silly. Yeah. And, you know, for younger people, sometimes it's even worse mm -hmm. because they, a lot of the younger people, I mean, there's been a big statistic that came out just recently from a study that was done that says over 50% of men over the, in the, in their thirties have pretty much given up on dating. Wow. They don't want to date. And, you know, and if women, you know, there's maybe 20% of them that are single, 20, 30% that are single. So younger women are looking for older men because the 30 somethings aren't available. Right. It was a frightening study to read, you know, and hear about all this stuff going on. And a lot has to do with, you know, the video games and, you know, people want to sit there and just play video games. Right. So, and social skills. So, I, I mean, the younger generation, I think, is going to have even more problems. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. I feel like as we go on, I, I feel like the lack of um, communication skills is declining with our new generation. You know, they don't really communicate as well. You know, we didn't have the the luxury of cell phones growing up and we had we were forced to communicate with others. We were forced to go to people's houses and knock on their doors and talk to them, you know, and, and meet people. And, you know, it was always, you know, every everybody was communicating. That was the only way. And, you know, you don't see that nowadays everything is through cell phones or through computers and and the lack of communication is, is not there like it used to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, this is, these are issues. AI is starting to play a major role in the dating scene. Yeah. There are, some, this, this particular study that came out mentioned that there is a website where a lot of men are going now. You can get an AI date. <laughs> they actually have pictures of beautiful women that come on the screen. They say, hi, my name is Sandy. I'm 25 years old. I'm here to make you happy. You know, if you want pictures, I'll send you pictures of me. And it goes on and on like this. I mean, I saw this in its report and I couldn't believe it. Oh, my God. That people actually would rather do that. And <laughs> dating with virtual reality goggles. Oh, my goodness. Where everything is in, you know. That's the first time I was hearing about that. I didn't even know that existed. Oh, wow. So if people are really trying to get into good relationships, you know, the first thing, it seems like communication is key. Being honest is key. And, you know, that those are one of the first steps of, of a healthy relationship, it seems. Right. Well, like I said, truth, trust, communication, and romance. The four mm -hmm. keys, four pillars. And that's, you know, it's something that has to be. But again, the biggest pillar of all is knowing yourself. Right. That is so vital. And I watch my clients when they realize that you see them light up. You see them, the change that they make when they realize that, you know, it's their life. They can have whatever they choose. I mean, right. I use tools in my program like conscious language, science of deliberate creation, positive mental attitude, feng shui, uh, things like this to create the mindset. Right. To help them realize what's going on in their life. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it can definitely have a positive effect on a person's life. So tell me a little more about, you know, the programs that you have and, and what they consist of, because it sounds very interesting. I have an audio book, as I mentioned earlier, and mm -hmm. we go step by step through the audio book. The first part of the book is all about the person taking the program. And it's about getting them right on the inside. So it's who you are and how you choose to live the rest of your life. Right. Because whether you've got 70 years left or 20 years left, how do you want to use those years? Right. Because if you don't know, somebody else is going to tell you. And right. that might not be fun. Right. Okay. And then once we have you squared away, 
Then we build your ideal person. We go through the characters, traits, personalities I mentioned, all of these things, and we construct what your ideal person could be. Right. Okay. That's the first part. Then we talk about the attitude that you need to maintain while you're in the singles world until you have achieved what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And so often that's something people can't do. Yeah. They give up, they panic. But if you stay true to your beliefs and you believe in it, and it's really what you're looking for, you will find it. Right. It's amazing. I know because I lived everything that I profess in the program. Right. Mm -hmm. I've spent years and years out on the dating scene, interviewing people, being with people, making mistakes. Right. But when I met my wife, it was like game over. Because I knew after our first date that this was the woman I was looking for. Right. Because I knew what to look for. Exactly. Exactly. And this is the thing. So that and then once we have the right attitude, then we get into the part of the differences between men and women. Right. Okay. And there's a big section on that where we talk about that. And of course, you know, in my program, the, the clients have homework they have to do, things they have to read, things they have to do. So when they then they've understood that. Then the last part is all about truth, trust, communication, and romance. It's all right. about the four pillars and how you build that, how you maintain that. And during this time, of course, we're talking about how do you date? Mm -hmm. People don't know how to go out on a date. Right. Too often we're, we're expecting to go out on a date and have some physical thing happen. Mm-hmm. You know, or we're, we're just in such a hurry that we just want to, you know, run through everything. No. The only reason for date number one is to ever see if there'll be a date number two. Exactly. The only reason for date number two is to see if there's going to be a date number three. Mm -hmm. And each one of those dates is an opportunity to learn about the person that you're dating. Right. And for them to learn about you. It's not one sided. It's not you're the FBI quizzing them. Right. It's an exchange of information. Because mm -hmm. you want to give information about you that you know they're going to need to know because this is who you are. Right. And you want to know from them who they are. Mm -hmm. And you do this through nice conversation. Right. And, you know, it doesn't have to be just sitting at a, at a dining table mm -hmm. you go out on a hike. You can, you know, play pickleball. You can do a lot of things together. Right. But it's communication. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're an athletic person and you say, well, why don't we play pickleball? Why don't we go play tennis? Why don't we play golf? And the other person says, no, I don't do that. I don't like that. Well, OK, is that an issue for you? Right. If it is, done. Mm -hmm. because if it's something that important. You know, if somebody has a, a hobby that is like overtakes their life, right? Well, then you need to know whether you could put up with that hobby. Right. I mean, I have a friend who just loves to fish. He will spend every free minute of his time on his boat fishing. Mm-hmm. Now, his wife loves to fish also. So they go out together a lot of times. Right. So he found somebody that loved his addiction. <laughs> you know? But I mean, if you, if you met someone who says, you know, I fish every free moment I have. You say, well, I don't right. like boats. I don't like it seasick. I don't like the smell of fish. Why would you hang out? No matter how many other qualities the person has. Right. You know, so these are the things. It's being very realistic. But you can have exactly what you're looking for. It's really important to dig deep into yourself and really know who you are as a person. 
and, and, also, and to have that self-respect and to really not to really build that self-esteem up and really know who you are as a person and really that's what you base it on having self-respect and 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 then going into a relationship knowing who you are and then having being honest and being truthful and, yeah. and looking to see if you that, that if you're compatible looking at you know these things that these characteristics these interests of this person do I like it can I put up with it you know and so forth and it seems like that's how you how, how you start the basis of the foundation absolutely that's it you know it's just like building a building if the foundation isn't solid the building no matter how beautiful or wonderful it is is going to come down right right and that's the same with any relationship truth trust communication and romance now do you feel like um that that sex plays a huge part in a relationship or do you have all those characteristics and everything you know in that relationship but maybe in 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 behind the door closed doors underneath the sheets it might be okay but it might not be the sparks or maybe because maybe people are deluded from what they see on TV they get you know they get that miscommunication of of what love and what sex is really supposed to be about you know the pleasurable you know feeling that you have when you're with the person that you care about and love and do you think that maybe the media kind of kind of disludes people or and do you feel that sex plays a huge role or just a very small portion of of the relationship well no i think sex is an important role and you know but again it comes down to you know i mean just what in the way of sex do you accept? Do you mm -hmm. are you looking for? Right. Some people are very free and very open. Some people are not. Right. And it depends just on you know where that person is, and that's why, again, it's communication. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's you know there are some people who just aren't into sex. Right. They might be great in other areas, but they're just not into it. Well, if that's the person you're dating, then, you know, you've got to choose on that. Because right. if you say, well, I'll accept it, even though I don't want it, it may right. create a problem later on. You may be out looking for it somewhere else. Right. Exactly. You know, um, you know, some people have physical issues that may prevent them from being able to have a lot of sex. Right. Again, is that something a person, the other person can accept? Right. You know, and that's why everything comes down to, can you accept this in your partner and can your partner accept that in you? Right, exactly. Uh, and exactly. you know, and if not, can anything be done? Sure, sometimes things may be able to be done. Again, if that person is willing to do it, Right. Very true. Very true. Now, where can people find your website and where can they find your programs? Romancebychoice.com. Now, do you have a blog on that on that website? There are some articles and stuff on the website. It, it explains pretty much the entire program. It explains it for either whether you're single, divorced, widow, widower. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a little brief video clip on there. Um, and it, it sh takes you to where you can order my audio book. Okay. Now, do you have, um, can people actually get coaching with you? Uh, can they sign yes. up for coaching on your but website? Then, you can do two things. You can either buy the audio book and do it yourself. Okay. Or you can get the audio book and then have me coach you through it. Some oh, people prefer great. that because they'd rather have someone they can talk to, and work with, and give them other advice and ask questions. You can't ask questions to an audio book. Right. <laughs> now, is do you find that a lot of people come to you for one-on-one -on -one coaching or is this like a lot of a couples come also? No, it's only one-on-one -on -one coaching. Okay. okay. I do not do couples coaching. Okay. The reason I don't do couples coaching is Sometimes my advice might be you don't belong together. Right, right, right. I don't want to be the one to say that. Right. I'd right. rather work with people who are single and let's mm -hmm. help them get on the right track. Gotcha, gotcha. 
I like that. Yeah. I think that's important because I, and one of the things I see a lot of people kind of underestimate themselves and they don't, they don't feel they're worthy enough. You know, when you said that, I, I thought of so many people that you know, I could, I could think of the cross going across my head, you know, that many people just, you know, they, they, they just don't really understand how good of a person they really are. They underestimate themselves and they, and they don't, they don't really realize how important and how, how resourceful they are and how good they are, you know, and they tend to, you know, go underneath beneath them instead mm -hmm. of for someone adequate or above it, themselves. Absolutely. That is the first thing. Because, you know, this is, you know, no matter what, I could give you all the keys in the world, but if you don't love yourself, you're not going to find that love you're looking for. Exactly. So true. So true. Very true. This has been amazing. Thank you so much, Bill, for coming on the show. I, I love this. And if before we go, if you wanted to give a couple of tips out to people, just, you know, the a last couple of tips that you feel would really benefit people and help people get on the right track, what would you say to them? You know, what what tips would you give people who are, are in the dating world and having a hard time? Because I hear that all the time. It's really hard, you know, in, in the dating world to find that right person. What would you give some tips, you know, to, to tell them? Well, again, it comes down to, especially people using online dating. Mm -hmm. Online dating is a wonderful tool if used properly. Right. Okay. But most people do not use it properly. They mm -hmm. don't put the right photos online. They <laughs> don't put the right information online. Mm -hmm. So I write their profiles for them. I make sure their photos are looking great because I believe in the adage of see yourself as others see you. Right. Mm -hmm. So often I've seen people say, oh, I love these pictures of myself. And I realize it doesn't look anything like you. <laughs> or I've seen pictures where, you know, one picture person looks great. The next picture they don't. And it's because of the angles that they get the picture taken at. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So all of this stuff. That's why I say, see yourself as others see. Right. You know, and then yeah, again, it comes down to knowing what you're looking for. Right. I mean, too many times I hear people tell me, you know, I met someone online. I said, great. Tell me about them. And they'll say, well, you know, he lives two states away. Or she, I said, but well, what good is that? Right. If you can't see a person say, let's have dinner Wednesday night. You can't. It's very, it's, it, the odds of succeeding are much harder. Yes, there are people who have met on different coasts in different countries online and it's got married and they're happy. Okay, exceptions to every rule. Right. But in general, someone who's living three hours away, two hours away, an hour away sometimes might be too much to just see them on the spur of the moment, to just have a time right. together. Mm -hmm. You know, so... There's geographic determinations, boundaries. How far are you really willing to go to meet someone? Right. You know, so you can have a meaningful relationship. So, yeah, right. I mean, that, and then how they respond. Too often, online dating is taken up with texting. Mm -hmm. Stop texting. Right. Get on a call with someone. Right. Zoom call, a FaceTime call before you even meet them. Yeah. Because if they won't get on a call with you, they're hiding something. If right. You get on a call with them. You see who they're there. You then get to look at them and say, OK, they look like their photo or I think they're nice or I see their personality. I want to go at least have a cup of coffee with them. Right. And you can meet for coffee. But too often people spend months texting each other and never meet. Right. And I said, how do you know you're doing that? You're not talking to a 12-year-old boy or somebody in state prison. <laughs> exactly. Very true. Because anybody can put a photo online. Right. So, I mean, again, there are lots of little things that maybe just sometimes it's like common sense. But when you're in the dating world, common sense doesn't play a role. No. People are too emotional. Mm -hmm. They're in a hurry. They want to meet people swiping right and left and 
you know, all this stuff. Right. I always say you can't be an accident looking for a place to happen. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Well, this has been great, Bill. I thank you so much for coming on the show. I, I love the advice that you've given. And this is very, very helpful. I think I think it's really good that people understand, you know, the, the, the pillars that you've mentioned today. And really, uh, your program sounds great. You know, I think a lot of people, especially young people, you know, they, they can use this help and really benefit from from your program. And even your coaching, I think is great because sometimes, you know, the most powerful thing is one-on-one -on -one coaching when you're able to actually confide and talk to somebody and really create a strategic plan and, and help somebody really guide them on the right, on the right road and the right, and, and, and help them really realize who they are as a person and what their true needs are. Cause some people don't even realize that they, they, they're looking to figure out who they are as a person. And with some guidance like yours, they could actually figure out who they are and what their needs are. I think that's wonderful. Well, thank you. I think that's wonderful. So everybody, tell everybody one more time before we go, what's your website? Romancebychoice.com. <laughs> everybody, it's romancebychoice.com. By this is Bill. He is a romance and dating coach, and he has a great program. And I suggest that you go to his program. He is wonderful. Thank you so much for being on the show. And thank you so much for giving this advice. I think it's very beneficial and very helpful for our listeners. So thank you. You're welcome. So thank you. And you have a great day. You too. Bye-bye.